is 9 out of 100. <laughs> I don't know what GPA is particularly. Um, Alright, if you want to uh, turn to Hebrews for me actually, I'll get you to go there first. First of all, good to be back. I must say, I was here three years ago. Uh, a fair bit's changed, we're in a different hall. Uh, the rest of it's pretty much the same though. It's good to see a lot of familiar faces as well, uh, after all these three years. Ed, I see your problem that you had last night with this. This thing is already frustrating me to no end. What am I going to do with my hands? Um, okay, so I'll give you a title of the talk. Continue on. Uh, I'm calling it Open the Gates and then Brackets because we're coming home. All right, that's the title of the talk there. If you want to write that down, if you're taking notes, I thought it'd be good to have some brackets or parentheses. Is that what you call them here? Yeah, good to have that bit of a dramatic effect. All right, so I'm just going to quote to you the, the theme scripture there. So in Isaiah, we've got, Isaiah, we've got in verse 2 there, Open ye the gates that the righteous nation, which keepeth the truth, may enter in. And if we look at the context of the previous chapters, particularly that uh, scripture there as well, it's actually a song, right? They're singing, uh, and it's that the people will sing. These people of this righteous nation will sing this song. And on that day, and that day being the return of the Lord, and that's what we'll be singing. We'll be singing for the gates to be open because we, that righteous nation who carries the truth as we do, as we know full well, that gospel message will be entering in and will be coming home. And for us, I really want to highlight that point of, and I did it last night as well, is that our attitude here? I think camp is a great opportunity for us, I include myself in that of course, for us to really step aside, take a break from whatever the situation and circumstances of life are, and really assess what our priorities are and what our attitude is towards the things of the Lord and more importantly, to reset our barometer in life, to reset our target, to really recognise and assure ourselves of the fact that there is such a great beyond compared to what life throws at us. Compared to what happens around us, we are a very privileged people, a very righteous nation because we can say full well that there is something grander than what's happening around us. There's something bigger than life. And that to me has been a really big key theme for me, perhaps in the last year. I don't just mean 2020, I mean the last actual calendar year. Uh, we, I've really just been getting a lot of different thoughts and heard a lot of different talks, read a lot of, a lot of different scriptures that really highlight to me the point of looking beyond what's going on around me. Because it's very easy to get caught up and get distracted uh, in, the, in life, in general, I think of work and, and school for those who are still there. Then you've got family is a massive one. I'm sure we all can talk about different problems our family's got. Is it really a family if there isn't problems? Right? <laughs> like we've all got them. There's then the small things as well. Uh, I'll give you one. The other week, uh, actually not the other week, it's a bit longer than that. Last year, in about October, I get woken up to the lovely sound of mum coming into the bedroom at 7.30 saying... Jan, you need to get up, a garbage truck has hit your car. Right, now, I couldn't have been any further away from a collision there if I'd asked about I was asleep. You know, and there's those little things, right? Now, there's opportunities for fret, maybe that's a small example, but the point is there is that stuff happens, right? Things happen, and I have to deal with them, you have to deal with them. But how privileged is it for us that we can look beyond that, and we can look at the gates. We can see the gates ahead. Very soon, they'll be opening up to us. The return of the Lord, whenever that is, and hopefully it's soon enough, and really that's the final thought I want to bring out, not of the talk, I'm still going, uh, but the final <laughs> highlight of the introduction. Uh, well, we've got another 45. <laughs> the final point I'll highlight there is we want to be earnestly seeking those gates to be open. That has to be our prayer. Not only that we can see what's beyond and go, well, the Lord's going to take care of this situation for me, but I know that there's a hope beyond. I know that he's coming soon and I'll get eternal life. No, it's I earnestly want eternal life. I want these problems to go away. And the best way they'll go away is if the Lord returns. That's the greatest answer to all of it is that the Lord will come back and I will not have to worry about a single thing. None of you will have to worry about a single thing. So is that our attitude? Is that our prayer? Is it daily, Lord, when are you coming back? That's got to be our attitude and our focus. In Hebrews 11, oh, I got you to turn that before. Choking on my own spit there. In Hebrews 11, verse 8, I'm going to give you a great example of someone who saw beyond, saw a greater thing, a greater city. We're highlighted there in, in Isaiah the fact that this is a brand new city, it's a brand new country, it's a brand new place prepared for us. 
And Abraham here, in verse 8, does a similar thing. It says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he so journeyed into the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. That's that city. I just put it up again. The scripture's not up there anymore. The one with our theme scripture. That's that city, that foundation and the builder who is God, the great builder. This is a city that's not tangible here for us. These aren't gates that are, you know, we're not going to particularly necessarily walk into an actual city. I don't know how it's going to work when the Lord returns. But what I do know that that's a great analogy for us is that we're going to burst through and get somewhere greater. And Abraham here, without the promise, which we're going to read in a moment, understood that. There was an understanding of, I'm looking for something beyond what the natural is providing me. This isn't a promise of what's here right now in front of me. This is a promise of what's to come. It's a spiritual inheritance. In verse 13 of Hebrews 11, it says, These all died in faith. Hebrews 11 here has a number of different examples of people operating and working through faith and having the Lord really provide in incredible, miraculous ways. And then having faith in incredible circumstances. And it says here again in verse 13, Not having received the promises but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek the country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country, that is, an heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city, and he has prepared for us a city. Do not think that those scriptures are not applicable to you. He's not just talking there about these people. This is a great reminder to us in Hebrews here that if they, having not received the Spirit, having not the promise, having seen them afar off, knowing for well they wouldn't be a part of that, they wouldn't have immediate access, how much more then should our desire be to be there at that city? If they saw it, then we've got no excuse. There's no excuse. We have to be fully aware of what's to come and we have to fully seek it as well. And that's really what I wanted my um, theme to, to be about in this talk here is that our cry has to be open near the gates. We want to be singing that song daily. That song is about us. I know it's in the Old Testament and sometimes Old Testament things seem a little bit like, well, this, is it prophetic? Is it, what's it talking about? It's very clearly here a great analogy to us. The Bible often uses the city as a great analogy for us because it's something we can understand. It's tangible. But it's going to be a city beyond comprehension. It's going to be something that perhaps it is hard to think about. Eternity is very difficult to think about and to grasp. Uh, we're very much people that operate on time. Yet, that's what's coming. And that has to be our focus. If it was a focus for them without the Spirit, us with the Spirit who can daily commune with the Lord, who can daily get down on their knees and pray, who can have fellowship with one another, can have immediate access to all of God's Word, we can't hold back anything. Now's the time to be singing out that cry of open near the gates. Let's finish in Revelation chapter 21. Really some great analogies of a city in Revelation. For those of you who have read it, you know what I'm talking about. You know, the new Jerusalem, the new heavens and the new earth. In Revelation 21 here, there's a lot of references to gates. In fact, the gates are described. They have pearls in them. There's the number of gates as well. It really goes into great detail. And the gate is a great you know, symbol. For now, we're just at the gates. The gates aren't open yet, but we've been granted access to them. We're just waiting. We're just ready to go in. And there are going to be many who do not get to go in. Many. And many of those people will also be spirit-filled. Many of those will have not had an excuse. They would have known. They would have read this and at a time would have believed it and then caught themselves slipping. Something would have come up and got them in, got in the way, been a stumbling block to them. Perhaps they just stopped believing. Perhaps they got their neck in a knot. There's a good way of saying it. I like to think they They get bitter. They become anguished against the things of the Lord and before they know it, they've given it up. They've given it away. That cannot be us. That must not be us. I cannot stress it enough. If there are things that are getting in the way, there are things that are bringing you down, 
It's time to, to cut them out. It's time to move forward from them as well. The Lord is a gracious God. If he hasn't returned yet, there's still time. But as we all know, with time, it runs out. And there's going to be a day where the Lord returns and we want to be at those gates. In verse 1 of Revelation 21, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, or Jammon, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Let's drop down to verse 25 here, same chapter. It says, And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. The gates will not be shut. Once they're open, that's it. Time's up. The gates are open forever. Are we going to be a part of that promise? Are we going to be the ones entering in, singing that song, singing those praises? This is the time. Camp is the time for us to make those decisions, to have those thoughts, to think about the things that's going on in our life. And I'm not just saying things that perhaps are bringing us down in terms of maybe we're not spiritual enough. That's not it either. It's also the, the idea of reassessing our focus as well and, and getting an understanding of that thing that's bringing me down, that situation that I'm dealing with, big or small, it's actually, and it maybe sounds harsh, it's irrelevant. And that's not to criticise any situation. I've gone through several over the last, actually since I was here, uh, three years ago at this same camp. It's been a very big journey for me. If anyone wants to talk to you about it, they can. I'm not going to give it in the talk. But I look back at it now and a constant reminder throughout those situations was that there's something above it. And at the end of the day, if I'm where I need to be, which is here with the Lord, if I'm trying to do the things as much as I can for the Lord, if I'm around brethren, if I'm reading when I can, if I'm praying, if I'm, my attitude's right, it will all work out. It will all come together for good, we read in Romans. I'm going to quote to finish off here. Revelations 22, verse 20. I really like this scripture. I think it's very poetic. It says, He which testify these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so... Come, Lord Jesus. What an ultimate prayer to finish on. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. He's already said he's coming quickly, yet for us it's got to be not quick enough. It's got to be not quick enough. So even sure, surely, Lord Jesus, come and come quickly. All right, I just want to leave it there with that thought. Brothers and sisters, there, we're so privileged to know where we're going. No one else does. Without the Spirit, you don't know where you're going. And we do, and we are guaranteed it when we walk through. So, come quickly. All the people said? Yeah.